So, to begin with, the HTTP request response cycle. Well, HTTP is a stateless protocol. You issue an HTTP request using typically a POST or a GET method. Um, I'll go to the most basic GET method here of issuing a URL. A URL doesn't have to come from a browser, of course, it can come from pretty much anything. But the URL just does a GET request. It contacts the web listener, sending it a message requesting a page. The web listener does whatever is necessary and returns the page, usually in the form of HTML, but not necessarily. So to break down what a URL actually is, you specify a protocol, then a delimiter, colon slash slash, username, delimiter, colon, and a password, and an at symbol, host.domain, delimiter, colon, port number, delimiter, a slash, then a path, delimited with a slash, file name with a dot as a delimiter and an extension, followed by a question mark, and then a set of parameters, parameter equals value pairs. So your entire URL may have all of these elements, it usually won't. So, for example, a typical URL I have on the slide just there is FTP. If I were to launch my browser, get a browser up, and give it an FTP type URL, FTP, colon, slash, slash, uh, a logon. What might my logon be? Perhaps give it a username, Oracle, password, Oracle. I'm not talking high security here. At and then my server dot one six eight one nine two one six eight fifty six dot one zero one and see what we've got. So I didn't specify the entire URL at that point, just part of it. And if we look down here, check my status line at the bottom. If I hover over hollow hello world there, you see in the status line at the bottom of the browser, FTP colon slash slash oracle colon oracle, which username password at a host name, and then specifying a file, hello world.txt. Clicking on that, the get message is sent, and back comes the contents of the file. That's all a URL is. You issue a URL, your client then hangs until the server side returns the page of HTML or whatever it may be. Now, that will be a fairly basic URL in the Apex environment, your URL is more likely going to be of this form. It will be of the form HTTP colon slash slash machine, then a port, typically 8080. You are then the path probably Apex, so it could be something else, and then the slash, and then F and a question mark. Well, what's that, the F and a question mark? Well, breaking it down again, an example, I'll go to HTTP, colon, slash, slash, and the destination I'm going to go to is just at this point one of Oracle's demonstration sites. So, we could go to apex.oracle.com. I happen to know this listener is listening on port 80. The virtual path that's being configured is PLSOTN. This is part of the or cryptology network, and then F as a file name. Remember, after the file name, we can have a question mark and a parameter string. And the parameter string I'll give it is P equals 31517. So, machine name, port, path, file name, F, parameter string, P equals 31517. Send that URL off, and we get back a page from a demonstration Apex application. So what actually happened when we ran that? Well, the web listener on the other side received the HTTP request and parsed it. It looked at that path, PLSOTN, and the web listener, whatever it is, mapped that onto something else. In the case of my FTP URL, it mapped it onto a file name and copied it back. In the case of an Apex listener, that gets mapped onto a call to run a PL SQL procedure. Which procedure? It's the procedure called F, which is perhaps not the most helpful procedure, but the procedure called F. Now, what is F? On any database where Oracle has been, where Apex has been installed, if I select owner 
and object type from DBA objects where object object name equals F which does need to be in quotes We see there's a public synonym, and if we investigate further, we see that's mapped onto that procedure. So now we know that F, in this case, is not a file name. It's a piece that's a PL SQL procedure. And what is it? There's the procedure. This is the procedure, the F procedure. This is the heart of Apex. You invoke the procedure with, optionally, one or more parameters. I've passed through one parameter, which is P equals, and I gave it P equals 31517, and that is the page identifier. So you request a page by name or by number, and there are a few other extras you can add on to the P arguments, which would be, say, the session identifier, a few other parameters you can drive it with, and in some circumstances you'll set extra ones. So that's what an Apex application is. It's a URL that invokes the F procedure, the F procedure then generates a, a page of HTML which is sent back to you. So, how is that page generated? That becomes the next major point of discussion.